Bigley and mornings. Arizona Sports, the local sports leader. Bigley Blast. The Suns are a cliffhanger of a basketball team, a team living on the edge, a team that, that has the unenviable task of having to win both ends of a back-to-back against a talented team from Los Angeles. And we know from the NBA, going full throttle in back-to-back games is not only difficult, it is dangerous. So here is what the Suns need to do starting tonight on Fan Appreciation Night in a season where fans have not at all appreciated this never-ending cruel tease of a basketball team. One, they need to stay locked in defensively. The Suns were the NBA's eighth best defense over the past week, and that is the new standard. Two, they need to stop foul hunting in moments of high pressure. It's the look of a desperate team asking for help from officials. Three, they need to truly embrace the physicality they are going to encounter from this point forward, especially after the Pelicans got under their skin and four they need Devin Booker to do exactly what Zion Williamson did on Sunday to grow in stature on the court like the Incredible Hulk putting a team on his shoulders and carrying them to the finish line book seemed to be coming that alpha dog before a soggy performance on Sunday and he needs to get right back in that lane because if there's one thing fans do appreciate on Planet Orange it's Devin Booker and more than ever this must be his time All right, today's Bickley Blast brought to you by my great friends at Chapman BMW who make luxury attainable. Find them online at chapmanbmw.com. One at a time. Just win the next game. That's our mindset for the next four. And, uh, you know, where we land in the standings, we'll be okay. You know, we want to get in that top six. We're in position to get in that top six still. Um, But if we end up in a play-in game, we'll be confident. Yeah, and the Suns right now as we start uh, today – Going into Tuesday night's action, again, there was no games in the NBA last night, but they're in that sixth spot. There's one way to ensure that. Win every single game, yeah. and nobody can take number six away That's from right. you. And that's you right. might put yourself in position to move up to five if, if you so wish. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that's the right attitude to have, uh, even though it's it's a bit cliche from Frank Vogel, but mm-hmm. that's the way they have to attack it. And, yep. and, and did they attack it the correct way on Sunday? Again, I... I, I I don't fault the Suns for playing a bad game on Sunday. Mm -hmm. I thought they got outplayed. In fact, I think it was just one of the few games this year where you were like, all right, they played okay. They ran into a team that was just more dialed in uh, the, on the, Sunday. And the, uh, the end game optics of that game would lead you to exactly what Bradley Beal said. Mm-hmm. It, it looked like the Pelicans wanted it more. Their play reflected that. They, they had an air of desperation about them and an air of you're not beating us today mm-hmm. about them. And, and that's what I think we all felt. And, and so I agree with you. I don't think it was necessarily a bad performance. I think their first quarter kind of extended a, a run of really, really good defense over the past week, as I mentioned in the blast. They're averaging uh, 105 points per game allowed. That's pretty good. Yeah. That's a good defense by by today's NBA standards. But the defense also waned after the first quarter it a little did. bit, especially in that second quarter. New Orleans got a bunch of open looks. Frank Vogel talked about that. Yeah, we still, we still, they still had guys on the floor we were going to guard the same way. And, um, but we didn't. You know, we didn't shadow, you know, behind the, the guy on the ball as well as we did last game. You know, and then when we did, you know, we still got too many backside. We got burned on the backside too many times with controllable things. So um, we just got to be better. Yeah, and I think uh, your point on Devin Booker is, is fair. And I think New Orleans went in with uh, a two-pronged approach mm-hmm. on Devin Booker. A, we're not going to let him go no. off for the way he's gone off on us. And B... We're going to irk him a little bit in the process. Yes. And I think it was more than a little bit because he got into it with Trey Murphy the third. He got into it with Dyson Daniels. Mm-hmm. He got into it with Jose Alvarado. He got into it with Willie Green. He, yeah, he a did. A guy who That's used right. to be on the coaching staff of the Phoenix Suns. Yeah. So I, I, I think New Orleans, they didn't do it publicly, but behind closed doors, they were probably giggling a little bit like, hey, that's the way that's you, 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 you yeah. take care right. of Devin Booker. And and, and having th- Jose Alvarado back on the floor and available for them 
was key in pulling that off because I, yes. he is an irritant. Yes, he he was the again it was CJ McCollum then it was then it was Jose Alvarado then Zion finished the job and, and and so I think I think there is good stuff that came out of that game. There was Bradley Beal was fantastic, mm-hmm. um, but but the, what the moment represented that's why it was a failure to me. It was a chance to do something really good at home to finally deliver in one of these big moments you have at home. When stop rubbing your eyes, Ferret, <laughs> you're gonna get it another sty <laughs> how you you what? tattletale you dog <laughs> you what? he wasn't even here it, it was my Hill. responsibility right. wow. <laughs> to inform my radio partner we, on yes. what happens yes. in these air on yes. these airwaves while yeah. he's gone <laughs> Un- uh, we got a rat we no, got a squealer not, amongst he's us a he's not a rat who's gonna do it you yeah you lieutenant yeah. weinberg <laughs> All right, so uh, where was I? <laughs> I have a responsibility you can't possibly fathom. Exactly, <laughs> exactly, Jarrett. So I, so yeah, so listen, I, I think all the, the 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 size of that moment, the uh, the ability to finally reward your fans and make things easy on you, that that's that's what bothered me. It's what bothered a lot of people. You got a you got a chance tonight. I I would not be surprised if you you're going up against the JV tonight. I wouldn't be surprised if the Clips mail this one in tonight and play for tomorrow night. They're coming off a very emotional from all the way from 26 down to win the game. I wouldn't be surprised if they punt on tonight. It could be one or the other. They could might be. play tonight and punt tomorrow maybe, night. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, but is, is Kawhi going to be available for either I, game? I don't. Yeah. Out tonight. I'm telling you. I, if, if, I, if I were a Clipper fan, I would not bank on seeing him again this year. It's, it's his knee, man. We talked about that when this injury first popped up, and that was, you know, knees and Kawhi Leonard. When when knee is the body part in question on the injury report, it doesn't necessarily <laughs> no, go well. No, he's been anything else. He's been uh, he's been the picture of sturdiness, but but this but, but they're still pretty darn good without him. That's the thing that has to be said. Yeah. By they're, the way, the Suns are going into tomorrow, regardless of what happens tonight. They have the second best record in the NBA on the back end of back to back games this year. Is that right? Boston is eleven and two on the second half. The Suns and Bucks both nine and four. Wow. So far in thirteen back to backs. All right. The exact opposite of the Washington Wizards, who are 0 and thirteen. Wow. <laughs> How's that first year without Bradley Beal treating the Washington Wizards? Yeah, like a baby treats a diaper. That's Ooh, uh, <laughs> yeah. There you go. How's that Jordan Pool uh trade going yeah, yeah yeah not so well and your point too on um you know what we saw from zion williamson at this time of the year that's what your best players need to do mm-hmm. and it was frustrating on a number of fronts in the fourth quarter because beal was really the only threat offensively in the fourth quarter for the suns yeah and kevin durant missed some shots he took some some culpability for missing those shots but how many times have we seen, regardless of, of who's scoring and who's not, but Kevin Durant and Devin Booker's fourth quarter numbers in close games have been bad, downright puzzling yeah. at yeah. times. Yeah, puzzling this year. too. Yeah, I agree with you. That's got to stop. I mean, that has to change if this team's going to win anything. That has to change. So here we are, last regular season home game of the of the year. Fan appreciation. Uh huh. We appreciate Not, the fans. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do the fans yeah. appreciate yeah. the team? Well, that's, yeah. <laughs> it's... I was there on on uh, the gorilla's birthday. It was you... mascot, or what was it? Gorilla appreciation? Gorilla mascot madness. That's right. Slash birthday. Yeah. Very exciting. <laughs> I got to tell you, I've never, uh, I've never been a huge mascot guy. Mm-hmm. I and mean, the gorilla's great, great mascot. Tremendous athlete. Tremendous athlete, the mm-hmm. gorilla. Great uh, break dancer. The yeah, the inflatable mascots that were on display on mm-hmm. Sunday, mm-hmm. those things creep me out to the no same. end. Same, <laughs> same. They always have. I, they always the the yeah, the father and the son combo. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, please take like, them off the court. I like when they shrink. Only. They shrink Somebody down. take a pin, deflate those Oop. things, and stick them in a closet. Thank you. You only yeah. want the real gorillas. They're a, I, I'm I'm with you. They kind of creep me out a little bit too. <laughs> for whatever reason. I'm always thrown off when they can squat so quickly. I love it. When they drop to the floor. I'm like, how did... Huh? I, that's the thing what? that creeps me. I don't know how they work. Yeah. It's like a Kawhi Leonard knee. 
<laughs> they were taking a, a, a group picture, and I think it was the Mercury mascot was holding the little inflatable gorilla on it, on his its lap mm-hmm. and dropped it. <laughs> and it was like... And they had to like grab it by the like. I, I, I still can't believe your number one takeaway from attending a basketball game yeah. in person was complaining that the restaurants were closed in the fourth quarter. I had a plan. As if you didn't stuff your face enough. I had a plan for one treat for each quarter. <laughs> for him, not for my, her, Bennett. <laughs> for him. See, he my, my my nephew loves basketball. Huge fan. Knows all the stats, all the players' name, everything. But he's he is still five years old, so he's also just a little bit too literal or uh, too little to really follow everything, but he's also literally too little to kind of see over everything. Yeah. So you have to kind of keep him occupied by mm. with other means. And you went the food mean. Yeah, he is my nephew after all. <laughs> it's blood. Thanks for watching Bickley and Murata. Click to see the latest Bickley Blast and hit the button in the middle to subscribe to Arizona Sports.